Assalamualaikum. Hi guys. Now I'm going to complete the last video for our chapter 6 which is about the last subtopic iaitu bahagian Le Chatelier's principle. In this video we are going to learn the effect of catalyst on a system at equilibrium by using Le Chatelier's principle. What is catalyst? So catalyst is a substance which speeds up the reaction di mana catalyst akan provide alternative mechanism with lower activation energy and then catalyst juga akan increase forward and reverse rates to the same extent so that equilibrium akan dicapai dalam masa yang singkat but please remember that catalyst has no effect on equilibrium position ataupun value of Kc so itu sahaja bahagian catalyst. Very simple. Now I'm going to conclude all those factors that affect the system at equilibrium yang sudah kita faham dan kita sudah belajar dalam previous videos. The first one adalah concentration. Dan saya akan bincangkan apa effect concentration untuk reaction shifts dan juga the value of K. For concentration, it will affect the equilibrium. And then, dia tidak menukarkan apa-apa value K. So, K value is constant. Next, kalau saya ada pressure, akan ada equilibrium shifting. But, the value of K also stay as it is. And then, for the volume, yes, it will change the equilibrium. And then, the value of K still no change. Next one, kita ada temperature. Temperature juga akan memberikan kesan kepada equilibrium. Malahan, temperature juga akan menukar value K. Sebab itulah awak kena alert dekat sini. Kita dah belajar tentang equilibrium constant before this. About K is dependent on temperature. And last one, untuk video kali ini kita sudah faham tentang catalyst. Dia tidak akan memberikan apa-apa efek kepada equilibrium tapi dia hanya cepatkan masa to achieve the equilibrium. Same goes for the K value. There will be no change. The K value remain the same when you apply the catalyst into your reaction. So now I'm going to try a few examples with you so that you can understand how to answer or explain the shift in equilibrium position if any based on Le Chatelier's principle. So we have several cases here we are going to go one by one so i have this equation and the delta h my enthalpy is positive so when we do for the first question you have to decrease the concentration of h2 gas so h2 gas berada dekat sini so bila awak decrease the concentration so what will happen equilibrium akan re-establish to increase back the concentration of h2 so it means that kat sini kurang so the equilibrium will shift to the right to increase back the concentration of H2. That is why your shifting direction akan go to the right. Next one, we go for question B. The temperature is lower. So this reaction kalau kita lihat it has enthalpy positive value. So kita boleh faham this reaction is endothermic untuk forward reaction. Tapi untuk reverse dia adalah exo. So what happen when you lower the temperature? Maknanya you kurangkan ataupun you remove the temperature. So what happen bila awak lower the temperature? Equilibrium akan cuba untuk tambah semula heat. So bila dia tambah semula heat... So the system is preferring to go for the exothermy. So that is why the equilibrium will shift to the left untuk increase semula temperature. Next one, we have a catalyst. So apabila catalyst ditambah dalam reaction ini, kita faham the function of catalyst is to make the reaction more faster. So there will be no change to the equilibrium position. For the next question, we have C2H6 is removed from the system. So, kita remove this one. So, bila remove this one, we understand that this is our reactant. So, equilibrium akan 
cuba untuk counteract semula dengan menghasilkan lebih banyak C2H6. That is why equilibrium akan shift to the left. Next one. Sekiranya saya ada volume dan volume container itu saya increase. So when I increase the volume, maknanya volume dia opposite dengan pressure. Bila volume increase, pressure akan berkurang. So bila pressure berkurang, awak punya equilibrium akan cuba untuk re-establish so that pressure awak menaik semula. So dekat sinilah equilibrium awak akan move to the right ke arah mole yang lebih banyak. So that is why dia akan shift to the right here. Okay next one. Pressure is increase. So bila pressure is increase maknanya volume kita akan berkurang. So bila volume berkurang kita akan fokus bahagian pressure. So bila pressure increase The equilibrium akan re-establish to decrease back the additional pressure. So the equilibrium will move to the left. Di mana side with lower number of mole. Sebab dekat sini, ia adalah 1 mole. Sini ada 2 mole. Okay. So that's why they akan shift to the left for the equilibrium. Next, saya ada inert gas. Inert gas is added at constant pressure. So apabila kita tambah at constant pressure for the inert gas, volume of the mixture akan bertambah. So volume bertambah, pressure constant. Di sini dia akan menyebabkan partial pressure for reacting gases berkurang. So partial pressure untuk reacting gases ni merujuk kepada semua gases dalam ni. So untuk counteract the disturbance, what happened? the equilibrium will move to the right di bahagian yang lebih banyak number of mole so that dia boleh increase semula partial pressure so the shifting will be to the right and then last one if I have inert gas is added at constant volume so adding inert gas at constant volume we already understand it will not change the partial pressure of a substance Sebab partial pressure dia kekal sama. So, there is no change to the equilibrium position. So, settle untuk example 15. So, I leave it try this 7 for your exercise. Now, we are going to continue with the harbour process. So, harbour process ni apa? It is an industrial process for the manufacturing of ammonia. Dia datang daripada nama this guy. Fries Haber dan this guy dia adalah a German chemist who received a Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his research that emphasizing about how the formation of ammonia di mana ammonia is very important sebagai fertilizer ataupun explosives dalam industrial process for manufacturer of ammonia kita kena faham ammonia terhasil daripada mixing of nitrogen and hydrogen. So nitrogen can be found in many essential natural and synthetic compounds. Dan sometimes kita juga gunakan richest source of nitrogen which is in our atmosphere. Tapi however, due to the low reactivity of N2, the supply for usable nitrogen has become limited. Ini kerana we have nitrogen, for example we have N2. So N2 bermaksud dia holds between two nitrogen atoms. In the middle of it we have the triple bond. So triple bond ni menyebabkan nitrogen is very difficult to fix ataupun combine with other atoms because this bond, the strength of this bond is very strong. So that is why apabila kita hasilkan menggunakan 30% of nitrogen fixation on earth harbour process dia akan menghasilkan ammonia mengikut cara this one tapi as we know that N2 due to the triple bond that holds between two nitrogen atoms together is very difficult to combine with other atom di sinilah we have a certain ways to do in order to maximize the yield of ammonia kita kena buat something untuk increase the production penghasilan ammonia 
Ada several ways we are going to, to discuss based on Lee Chatelier's principle. The first one, awak kurangkan NH3 ataupun dan awak tambahkan reactant. The second one, you have to decrease the volume di mana increase the pressure. And last one, you have to decrease the temperature because originally the reaction will be exothermic. So, mari kita fokus one by one. So, let's say I have the first one. When I want to decrease the NH3, what happened? Reaction akan shift to the right apabila awak decrease the NH3. So, that dia boleh hasilkan lebih banyak ammonia. So, konsep yang kita belajar bahagian concentration for Le Chatelier's principle. Case yang sama juga, sekiranya awak increase concentration nitrogen dan hydrogen, the reaction masih lagi akan shift to the right so that more ammonia can be produced. Next one, cara seterusnya, we have to decrease the volume. When you want to decrease the volume, bila volume, kita akan tahu dia opposite with the pressure. Bila bermain dengan volume dan pressure, we have to take care of the number of mole for all species dekat bahagian yang berbeza, reactant dan produk. So, untuk bahagian this one, for the reactant, saya ada 4 moles of gas. Dan bahagian produk, saya ada 2 moles of gas. Then, when you decrease the volume, additional pressure akan menyebabkan equilibrium shift kepada side with lower moles of gas. So, that dia boleh kurangkan semula pressure yang banyak tu. Sebab tu, dia akan pergi ke arah kanan. So, bila pergi ke arah kanan, more ammonia can be produced. Next one, we have the last method where you decrease the temperature. Apabila awak nampak kat sini, formation of ammonia adalah exothermic di mana for the forward reaction is exo and the reverse reaction is endo. So, apabila temperature awak, awak decrease. So, when you decrease the temperature, awak remove dia, maknanya dia masih lagi prefer exothermic sebab kita release the temperature ataupun decrease the temperature. So, shifting for the equilibrium must go to the right so that dia boleh hasilkan lebih banyak ammonia. So, dalam kes ini, bila awak buat dalam in terms of KC, KC awak akan makin bertambah apabila awak decrease the temperature. Kenapa saya letak KC kat sini berbanding faktor yang lain? Sebab KC dia berkait rapat dengan changing of temperature. Before we end the application of Lee Chatelier's principle in harbour process, I hope you all should know that this is how the equation for formation of ammonia based on Haber process. Dalam Haber process, apabila awak ada low temperature, it will increase the yield of ammonia. Tapi, rate of reaction will be too low. So, the usual ideal condition for the synthesis of ammonia that you should know untuk temperature, kita gunakan 450 degrees Celsius to 500 degrees Celsius. Ini adalah yield yang kita dapat secara optimised dan rate awak tidaklah terlalu rendah. Dan katalis, kalau kita nak guna katalis, kita boleh guna katalis iron, Fe. And then, untuk promoter, dia adalah enhancer untuk katalis. Kita boleh guna aluminium oxide. Dan for the pressure, usually the optimized one untuk save the money, we use 250 atm. So, adakah awak perlu hafal all of this? No, you don't have to. But at least, cubalah tahu supaya kita faham the harbour process ini macam mana kita nak dapatkan synthesis of ammonia by using the best way. So, I leave it try this 9.0. Please try to answer this question and I hope you can understand well about Lee Chatelier's principle. So that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye!